What's up, all my nostalgia? Dave here with a review of Kesha's fifth album, Gag Order. Her first album since January 2020. It's been a little bit for Kesha. This is her, her last release on Kimo Sabe Records, aka her last release under Dr. Luke's label, despite the myriad uh, lawsuits and legal issues that have been going on between Kesha and Dr. Luke for several years at this point. It seems like that is largely uh, wrapping itself up, not really to the to the degree that Kesha would have liked, but it seems that with the music that Kesha is moving forward, and thankfully she'll be able to uh, no longer have to be in business with Dr. Luke's company anymore. So that's, I think, a positive there. But interestingly, I think lyrically this album is also trying to project a, a step forward, a step beyond you know those two comeback albums were communicating was it a uh, rainbow and high road from 2017 and 2020 those were the comeback albums from kesha they were much more triumphant and empowering it's not quite the same on gag order but i think what's really interesting about gag order is that this is i think a much more engaging and intriguing album sonically just the production is just a lot more varied and inspired and Kesha's performance definitely is up and down or, or, or all over the place in a fun way with the uh, introduction of autotune at times bringing back some of her old school delivery styles it, it feels like an inspired work you know notably Rick Rubin co-produced every song alongside Kesha uh, Kesha's mother uh, co-wrote some songs she of course is a famous songwriter in her own regard uh, but I think it's an interesting album you know uh just kind of going through the songs here, there's a lot going on. You know, I think Happy, for example, just straight up acoustic guitar, like an acoustic song. Um, Peace and Quiet, though, has this like really noticeable drum clap, you know, just completely different style of beat, different thing, and has this auto tune chorus uh, from Kesha that I think sounds really cool. Um, the drama, this like really fun, like electronic loop that then goes into this like heavy distortion uh section you know this this album seems to really kind of go all over the place and i don't know if this necessarily works or like comes together as like this great work but i think it definitely communicates uh like a new path a new step forward with Kesha because clearly in like what she's singing about what she's talking about she's trying to move forward in her life and also not be afraid of talking about when things are down and things have not gone her way certainly a lot of her public the public stuff has not necessarily gone her way but you know i think her she's almost kind of taken a step back from the outwardly triumphant stuff she was communicating on the last album it's not something i would not a direction i would have necessarily expected but i think that's kind of interesting um only love can save us now the delivery the delivery on that song from kesha very much reminiscent of like cannibal era kesha in terms of like the uh, almost like hip-hop uh, style of of delivery um like on a trap beat of all things and then goes the intro the intros up into this big uh chorus this big vocal chorus which is a huge step back uh, or just to change and then the, the verses again go into this more like cannibal animal era kesha the old school kesha you know it's a fun kind of reminder of the kind of music kind of style she used to have. Cause that's clearly not what she's into has been into for a while now. Um, yeah. So I think like really my, my takeaway on this Kesha album is that it's the most sonically interesting thing she's made. Um, probably ever, honestly, um, just cause it's kind of all up and down. You know, Hudson Mohawk co-produced one of the songs as well, but it really feels like something that Rick Rubin actually was directly involved with. You know, we know sometimes he's, a producer more in like name only or like in vibes only than being like super hands on um because he's so busy but uh you can definitely feel the influence with him and it's cool that Kesha is so involved in the, the production side as well um and yeah it's not like obviously I think most of us still love like old school OG Kesha just because it's really fun and even if it's funny because we think back on that time like she was critically derided at the time and like 
uh, I think, miscategorized as someone lacking in talent, lacking in musical ambition. And I think now we clearly know that that is so far from the truth. It will be really fun if she was to somehow find a way, a motivation, a desire to go back to that style of music and obviously update it for the 2020s. I'm not going to hold my breath that that's ever going to happen, but I, of course, would love that. But I do think Gag Order represents like a new kind of sonic direction and part of that is just the kind of ambiguity and all over the place with this so uh pretty cool pretty unexpected i wasn't i didn't really know this album was coming out i had missed some of those singles and this kind of snuck up on me but in a good way let me know though how did you feel about this catch album gag order how did you like it compared to the two comeback albums we've got in the past few years as well and for more music reviews subscribe and i'll see you next time